and we'll kick off with our first finalist, Dr. Brendan Chite, and the question of research, adaptation to drought from forests to the farm. Australia is the world's driest inhabited continent. It also has one of the most variable climates in the world. It's uh, cycles of intense drought followed by storms and flooding rain. It's been pretty wet lately, but we can all remember incidences of severe drought in the past. The impacts of drought can be terrible. This includes vast diebacks of native forest with flow-in effects to biodiversity loss and to hydrology and the, and the carbon cycle. But it's perhaps made most obvious to us by images of dying livestock and uh, crops, struggling farmers and inland communities. Australia has always faced the challenges of drought, but it's likely that climate change will amplify their effects. And this is simply because extra heat in the environment increases evaporative demand, drying plants and soil more quickly. In fact, this double whammy of heat waves and drought is being felt uh, in many regions all over the world. And because the impacts of drought are so profound, economically, socially, environmentally, it's crucial that we learn to adapt in the face of more extreme conditions. My research deals with the effects of drought on plants. How are different plant species adapted to deal with drought? How does this help us understand our natural environment? And how will it help, help us adapt our agricultural industries to, uh, to ensure food security and economic prosperity in the future? So to answer these broad and important questions, we need some very specific knowledge of plant physiology. Plants are thirsty creatures. Uh, in order to take up carbon dioxide for photosynthesis, they lose water to the surrounding air. But this trade-off is really uneven, and plants lose around 400 molecules of water for each molecule of carbon dioxide taken up. This is important to us because it means that uh, it's, it's the reason that it takes 1,400 liters of water to produce one kilogram of rice, and why one large tree can transpire hundreds of liters of water in a day. And it's also the reason that plants die when drought strikes. So I'm gonna talk about two examples of how my research is having an impact in drought adaptation today. Um, uh, the first is pertaining to natural ecosystems and the second to agriculture. Uh, they're both, both of these projects are works in progress. So we'll be talking about potential impacts and benefits um, that are expected to emerge from, from each of the projects. Now, as I said, um, drought can cause vast dieback of native forest, and this can have potentially catastrophic effects on biodiversity. I'm involved in a collaboration with uh, the organization of, uh, sorry, the Office of Environment and Heritage in New South Wales, which is aimed at um, identifying, uh, it's, it's designed to, uh, pardon me, um, it's designed to quantify the risk of native uh, forest dieback across New South Wales. And my research has identified key physiological traits which are involved, or which can be used to predict when certain species will die. Um, this will feed into the vegetation information uh, management system, which is being developed by OEH, and then can be used by a range of, end, uh, of stakeholders, including private landholders, uh, environmental consultants, and catchment management sort of authorities, uh, in terms of incorporating drought risk into their management decisions. In the work of agriculture, I'm currently leading uh, research looking at or aimed at improving the efficiency of irrigation. Um, and this is an international collaboration involving the United States Department of Agriculture and the, uh, one of the largest agricultural companies currently operating in Australia, um, Olam International. We're focusing on almonds um, because they have, they have one of the fastest growing crops in Australia. They currently have an export income of over $750 million with an investment along the Murray-Darling Basin of over a billion. And we're developing and testing a new generation of wireless sensors which will allow us to continuously and remotely monitor water stress in plants. And this approach is based on a simple concept. If you want to know when to irrigate, you have to ask the plants. And in order to ask that question, we have to have a reliable way of measuring water stress continually. And this kind of technology project is uh, inherently risky, but the payoffs could be huge. 
um, and that's in terms of reducing the amount of water we use and the cost of irrigation for thirsty crops. So this, uh, the technology is developed for almonds, but it's equally applicable and easily translatable to other, all other woody crops. Thank you.